Welcome to Radical Feminist Perspectives. Today, we are going to hear about the book Towards the Abolition of Surrogate Motherhood by ICAMS, uh, the International Coalition Against Surrogate Motherhood, discussed by Anna Deram. So without further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to Anna Deram. Oh, Anna, you're still muted, so uh, unmute yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you uh, today. Uh, thank you very much for this invitation and for giving us the opportunity to present you uh, the book Towards the Abolition of Surrogate Motherhood. Uh, I am Anna Deram. I am one of the three uh, co-chairs of the International Coalition uh, for the Abolition of Surrogate Motherhood. We are three with Marie-Joseph de Villers and uh, Berta O. Garcia. I will present, uh, I will propose you a three-point presentation. First, I would like to tell you why uh, we wanted to realize this book then what the book contains, and uh, third, what we propose to do uh, concerning uh, surrogacy. As my English is not very good, I will share with you my uh, support, my PowerPoint uh, support. Just a minute, please. I cannot do this. Sorry, I cannot do this entirely. Uh, I, so I, first... I, Anna, Anna, I'll I'll share the screen. Um, it, so if you will st stop sharing, and I'll I'll do it, and then we can have the whole one. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there we are. Okay, and just tell me when you want Great. the next slide. So I yeah. would like just yeah. Just why this book? So uh, the next slide, please, Joe. So we wanted to realize this book because uh, we observed several times that the voice of feminists in the fight and also in all the actions to criticize the practice of surrogacy uh, are silenced and invisibilized also by the media and by the political, uh, by the political actors. Uh, the business model of the surrogacy market has hijacked from ears the feminist vocabulary and also the feminist arguments. Words like consent, autonomy, empowerment, uh, free choice are uh, misused um, and uh, there are the feminist vocabulary normal. We also knew that feminists in many Western countries had been uh, writing and was also uh, acting against uh, surrogacy for decades um, for, the, for the beginning of the surrogacy practice. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, it's not this one. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Um, also, we wanted to, to do a book like a, a tool for fighting because in the face of a globalized market, it seemed important for us to gather the strength of feminists from several countries, from several continents, not only Western countries, of course, but also from other parts of the world. We wanted to brought them together. We wanted to make them better known, uh, one from each other, and also to share them across the linguistic boundaries. Uh, so initially, we wanted to do the same book in three languages, English, French, Spanish. Now, about the book uh, itself. Um, 
sorry. Uh, I will present you the English version, which was published by oh, the Sorry, Cintex sorry, last Anna, year. Anna, can yes? I just ask you to try sharing again? Because I the sharing I did was there was a there's a block that's making it not possible for everyone to see. Would you be able to try again? I think you were of course doing it of course. maybe better. And and we, I'm sure you'll get it. I think it was better when you were doing it. Yeah, that's better actually than than. Oh, okay. And okay. possibly if you could press that thing that looks like a wine glass in the in the bottom of the screen. Yeah, near it near way. If you put your mouse down to the bottom. Yeah. No. Yeah, near there. Go down a bit. Not no, further down. Yeah, on the a bit. Yeah, just a bit left and down, down a uh, let more left. That wine glass thing. Uh, more left and then click. Not not that. Move, move to the left a bit. No, the other way. The other way. <laughs> along, along, along. No, I, no, no, no. Yeah, but uh, I can, I can, uh, I can see it. I cannot see the. Oh, I see. You can't see it. Okay, <laughs> maybe should we? Okay. Uh, have you got a thing called slideshow? Um, Is it? I think that if I put it okay like this, you can, you can follow. Yeah, I think that's okay. I think people okay. could see it. Yeah, let's stick with this. Yeah. So the, the English version, uh, which the title is Towards the Abolition of Surrogate Motherhood, uh, was published last year by Spinifex. Uh, it, uh, it contains 15 chapters by 16 authors from nine countries, France, Spain, Italy, Austria, uh, UK, United States, Japan, India, and Australia. There is also a French version, which was published this year uh, by a um, French uh, social critique uh, independent uh, editor, Le Chappé. Uh, the um, title in French is uh, Ventre à Loué, une critique féministe de la GPA. Uh, this is a significantly extended uh, version of the, of the book containing 26 chapters from 27 authors from 11 countries. Uh, there are also contributors from uh, Sweden and uh, Canada in the French uh, version. Uh, all these uh, contributions were uh, received following uh, call for papers we launched in uh, 2019, or was the direct solicitation we addressed to Jenna Ria and uh, Felix Chesla. And I would like to thank all the contributors uh, because it is really a, a a very great book, and uh, we, we learn a, a lot about surrogacy in general. So uh, I will present you some of the of those uh, chapters, not all of them. I hope you will uh, read the book. Uh, just to um, give you an overview about the diversity uh, of the perspectives and of the, the issues. In her article, Jenna Korea, uh, is talking about uh, what is junk liberty. This is a very important, uh, very important text because this is her testimony before the California Assembly Ju Judiciary Committee uh, from uh, 1988. And uh, then the text was also published in uh, Reconstructing uh, Babylon. Uh, the junk liberty Korea is talking about in, in this text has the appearance of liberty, but not the reality. And I quote uh, Korea, anything that can nourish and sustain a woman's self, her soul, her life has been processed out. This is the effect of surrogacy. This is why uh, we are fighting against, against this uh, practice. Um, I'll go further uh, citing, uh, quoting uh, Korea, junk liberty is for the people the patriarchy would like us to be junk people, junk women, women without dignity or substance, women who can feel joy or pain or love or hate or anger, women who act like machines. And when we, when we see those words from Korea, from uh, 88, and uh, we uh, listen to the surrogate mothers today, uh, and some of them are talking about themselves like themselves, sorry, like machines or incubators, uh, we see that nothing changed and 
everything is going worse. Uh, another chapter um, is about uh, the geographical uh, dimension of uh, surrogacy, the chapter signed by, uh, by Marie-Joseph uh, de Villers. Um, her point is that uh, as a globalized market, surrogacy can only be properly understood at a global scale. Usually uh, the maps which are done to see how surrogacy develops are made on the legislation basis, but legislations change very quickly. So maps became uh, obsolete. Right now, most of the European countries prohibit surrogacy, but this ban is uh, very fragile. Why? Because the uh, so-called altruistic uh, regulatory models are gradually undermined in order to permit a commercial and a very open practice. The problems, the problem everywhere where the altruistic uh, model is permitted is the women rights because women are recognized as subjects of, uh, of rights. And uh, this is uh, a, a real problem for all those who promote uh, surrogacy. So there is an enormous pressure, pressure on all the states that prohibit or want to regulate, to restrict uh, surrogacy. What um, uh, De Villers shows in her, uh, in her chapter is that same actors are active in several countries in the same time. Clinics, agencies, law firms go from India to Georgia to uh, South Africa uh, to Ukraine and of course to United States. There is a very important um, article about uh, East Asia. Uh, it was uh, realized by um, a Japanese uh, sociologist, Yoshi Yanagiara, uh, entitled Handsman's Tale in uh, East Asia. And uh, she shows uh, there that from the perspective of East Asian culture, early surrogacy, uh, surrogacy systems already existed from several centuries before what is uh, presented as a, a new and progressive model uh, from the, the 80s. In China, in Korea, in Japan, uh, it existed from the uh, 14th uh, century. These agreements, these uh, surrogacy agreements were based on a written contract. So there is nothing new. Why, uh, what explain, I can uh, explain the existence of the, of the practice is the fact that to have a hair was, uh, is a moral imperative uh, in Confucianism. So there is a reinvented story who pretend that this is new, uh, who was bring by an American lawyer in Japan in the 80s. And of course, uh, it used very much the, the, the media uh, influence. Uh, Yana Giara also uh, shows that um, there are important academics, important uh, Japanese sociologists uh, who use the idea that this is the women's sexual autonomy to uh, become prostitutes and now to become uh, surrogate mother. A French author, uh, Alexandra Clément Sabi, which is a, a pseudonym, a pseudonym um, is talking about the patriarchal myth and the um, myth of reproduction concerning women, men, and the relation between uh, the women and, uh, and the men. She shows that uh, from thousands of years, women were not believed to be genetically related to the children to whom they gave birth, exactly like in surrogacy right now. The woman was considered a fertile ground, which is exactly the same in surrogacy. And uh, she presents uh, the theory of uh, preformism, uh, male preformism and female preformism. Uh, for the male preformism, the idea is the baby pre-exists 
in the seed of the father. And uh, this uh, theory, which is much more important than the one of female preformists, um, give the male primacy over women in reproduction. Uh, also, uh, she shows that um, traditionally women uh, were considered uh, biologically passive uh, in the aim to satisfy uh, the will of others and, of course, the will of, uh, of men who, who use them. And uh, all these ideas uh, are now present in the narratives about, uh, about Sorobos. Another well-known uh, patriarchal myth is the one about women altruism and uh, the women who like to make the gift uh, of, of themselves, the gift of uh, selflessness. And uh, she also um, very well uh, analyzes uh, the relation between uh, the uh, so-called animal uh, part related to uh, gestation, which is on the women's side, and the other one, which is the spiritual, the mind, the reason, uh, which is the one related to parenthood, and of course, to the intended parents. So the, parent, the, the intended parents are on the side of the mind and women on the side of the uh, animal. Um, an Indian contributor, Rita Banerjee, um, is talking about um, the way that uh, uh, the Oprah Winfrey show uh, promoted uh, surrogacy in, in India and made it made India to be a, a global uh, surrogacy hub. Surrogacy was legal in India from uh, 2002, but it was a very little uh, domestic uh, demand because of uh, India's caste prejudices uh, concerning the uh, mixing of uh, blood. In 2007, uh, Winfrey Show uh, aired an episode on, Windia, uh, on uh, Indian wombs for rent, and it became a uh, launchpad for India to become the world's largest and cheapest at that time uh, surrogacy hub. Um, Banerjee showed that uh, after the show, there was a sharp increase in surrogacy uh, and especially in surrogacy um, customers from the West. Um, 10 years later, the, the enormous majority of the customers were from uh, the from the west uh, from the western country, and uh, for instance, she um, analyzed uh, all the discussions in the in the show and uh, the way uh, Winfrey uh, emphasized um, the success of some, some details, such for instance the success rate. How to explain the success rate of surrogacy in India? Well, this is because. Indian women, Indian surrogates were implanted multiple times with as many as five embryos. Of course, this is this was also illegal in the United States. And all the people who envisaged to do surrogacy, to buy uh, children to, to surrogate mothers, uh, were very interested and uh, wanted to, to go to, to India after this. There are also uh, two articles about uh, the situation in the United States and especially in the state of New York. Uh, the uh, article of uh, Phyllis Chesler, who is showing that um, after, the, so she, she already organized Probers mother demonstration in, uh, for uh, Mary Beth Whitehead in uh, 1988. Uh, then she wrote, uh, Felix Chesler wrote uh, Sacred Bond, the Legacy of uh, Baby uh, M. And at that time, she remembered in this article, she was warned that women deserve the right to abortion. So it's naturally to consider that they also deserve the right to rent their wombs, to rent their vaginas uh, for money. And of course, in the interest of, uh, of the men. So she uh, observed, she denounced how commercial surrogacy is back. And uh, she says, surrogacy is back with a vengeance. Of course, she opposed the, to the legalization by uh, the state of New York, but 
um, she can not do uh, uh, anything else, but to consider that this was finally uh, legalized. Uh, and uh, Taina Bienaimé uh, uh, is speaking also about, uh, about this, um, this event. Um, she also shows the resistance uh, organized by uh, American feminists to the legalization of commercial surrogacy. Uh, and uh, she said that uh, they, feminists, they failed. Uh, how did the uh, governor Cuomo made this? Well, we did it in the vote for the budget of the state in April 2020. Uh, and uh, before, of course, feminists uh, took position but and the governor and the legislators ignored and the testimonies of uh, surrogacy survivors and the medical experts and the women rights because the lobbies promoting surrogacy were uh, very very strong and very well uh, present in the political um, institutions so uh, this is just uh, a part of the of the articles. Um, in the other articles, there are also uh, the presentation of a gay man uh, perspective who uh, rejects all surrogacies, straight men, people, uh, gay people, uh, lesbian, no surrogacy for uh, no one. Um, a Spanish author uh, is um, showing and analyzing the mercantile dimension. Uh, of the um, of the practice, uh, Melissa Farley uh, shows the parallels between surrogacy and prostitution, sexual and reproductive um, exploitation, uh, and there are also three articles, very uh, necessary point of view uh, concerning the, the relation, the bond between the mother and the child. Uh, an article about the microchimerism, the, the bond that cannot be deleted or denied between uh, the women and uh, the child. Uh, another article about the rights of the child confronted to the rights of the uh, customers. And uh, an article who uh, is based on a comparison about uh, with, uh, with uh, adoption. Renate Klein, that uh, maybe we can uh, hear uh, right now, uh, presents strategies for stopping international uh, surrogacy. This is about the contain of the book. Now, what we, the uh, international coalition, what do we propose to do? First of all, it is essential to continue to resist the surrogacy market. Then uh, we try to encourage the states to reject the regulatory approach, which is promoted from 10 years now by the CAR conference on private international law. We also are trying to uh, document the woman-centered perspective on surrogacy, which is more than necessary because uh, all the lobbies uh, promoting surrogacy are centered on the customer perspective. Uh, and not on the women. And when they are talking about the women, the, the woman or the women uh, surrogate mother, uh, they are doing it just to better put the light on the customers. We also um, would like to, to continue to inform the public opinion about the consequences of surrogacy on the women's health, on the women's lives, and of course, on the women's rights. And what we are really promoting is um, the adoption of an international text for the abolition of surrogate motherhood. This text is the one who uh, concludes the book. So we can find it, uh, you can find it uh, in the book and you also can find it uh, on, the, on our website. This is the feminist convention for the abolition of uh, surrogacy. Thank you very much, and uh, I will wait for your uh, questions or commentaries. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, we're now going to share a video from um, 
that from Renata Klein that was uh, as she made a couple of days ago and we've actually got two videos so if you while the videos are playing if you have questions that you'd like to put to Anna uh, she can now look in the chat but also put them in the Q&A and then after the videos um, uh, we'll come back uh, for questions so I'm going to now try to play the videos so This hopefully should work. I have an article in this book as well. And uh, in it, I talk about the strategies we should use to help us all around the world to, you know, uh, get closer to uh, abolishing this, this abomination that is surrogate motherhood. So we need to talk about it wherever we can. When we hear people say, oh, isn't it lovely and this man and that man, and especially we often hear it from gay men, oh, isn't it nice that these gay men now have a baby? No, it's not nice at all. They exploited two women to get this baby uh, in which they have a bit of their genes. The rest comes from the egg donor, not certainly, no, as we know, men only can produce sperm, no egg cells. So the rest of the genome in this baby uh, is from the egg producer. But it's basically the birth mother who nurtures it in her body, makes it grow from her bones and from her blood. And um, if she's lucky, uh, there's a baby at the end of nine months. And then this baby is taken out from her body, often with uh, via cesarean, and is given away to people um, that the baby does not know and has never asked to be a takeaway baby. So we need to enter into conversations when people just, without thinking just that, oh, it's so lovely, it's so nice. This is true for commercial as well as so-called altruistic surrogacy. Because some people think, oh, well, if no money uh, gets gets paid, then it's a good thing. It is not a good thing. It means very often there's an immense hurt uh, that comes to the so-called surrogate mother uh, who will never see her child in many, many cases. And that, you know, the family member who promised her that it would be, you know, like, uh, a little sibling for her own child, then grows very, very uh, annoyed that this woman can actually have a pregnancy and she couldn't. And we've had some cases that have been written about in another book called Broken Bones, uh, where it's very, very clear how much hurt can actually happen in, in a case of so-called uh, altruistic surrogacy, which is said to be, you're doing it for love, not for money. In my article, I also say that uh, we absolutely need more gay men to become our, our, to work with us, be abolitionists and speak out in public. We know, we, we all know gay men who are critical of surrogacy, but mm, they don't really like to speak out. We need more than Gary Powell, who also has a, an essay in towards the abolition of surrogate motherhood. Um, he's in England and he is fantastic, but we need more than uh, a single man who speaks out publicly and has got the courage to do so. Um, another point that I make in my um, in my chapter is that we have to look very critically at some of the new groups that are coming up and they have lovely names like Chip and and they produce the so-called Ver Verona principles. And the message goes something like that. They say there's good surrogacy and there's bad surrogacy. We really want to uphold the good surrogacy. And we want to do this because we're doing it for the right of the child. This is rubbish. It is absolutely rubbish. At the beginning of surrogacy, there is no child. There is no embryo. There is nothing. And it is only through a contract get, that gets signed by a woman who has said, yes, I will act as a surrogate and a couple that has the money to do so. Uh, it is only through that contract that uh, a child 
uh, is then said to be created in uh, in an ART lab, uh, where and that is entirely artificial. So there is no child at the beginning. This embryo is then inserted into the womb of the mother who carries it to term and gives birth to it. So it's wrong to say that we need to have regulations of surrogacy uh, for the children because there are no children. If we abolished surrogacy everywhere in the world today, Yes, there will be about a, a, hum, a few hundred children that are not yet born even, that are still in pregnant women. And yes, one would have to decide what happens uh, to them in terms of who their parents are legally, etc. But then it would be finished. There would not be any new so-called surrogate children, which is also a horrible misnomer to talk of surrogate children. They are real children and they are born of real women. So uh, another thing I also say in my article, which is really important, I think, and especially women need to think about that. I suggest we need to get past the compassion trap. And the compassion trap is, as we all know, as women, we have to be nice and kind and lovely and say yes to everybody, especially to men, and put ourselves always last. And that is actually what women who agree to uh, carry a child, grow and carry a child for somebody else are doing. Or that is what women who say, yes, yes, I so-called donate my eggs, meaning I let myself treat, be treated by very damaging hormone-like drugs. They do that. They say, oh, I want to do something good. I want to help somebody who's in fertile habit child. And that may well sound good, but it's to the detriment of their own lives. And as women, we need to reflect on this. Why is it always that we do this, we put ourselves last? And of course, we know why, because we socialize into this since we have been little girls. Little girls uh, get patted on the head and said how lovely they are, and they're nice, kind, and don't talk back. And those of us who in our childhood have talked back and have kept talking back, we are seen as the bad women, the witches and whatever. In earlier century centuries, we were burned on the stake. And these days we are just um, trying to be shut up and invisibilized. So this is an important discussion to have amongst women, including those of us who call ourselves feminists. So to conclude this little talk, Please get yourself a copy of Towards the Abolition of Surrogate Motherhood. I'll show it again here. It already exists in French um, and it will be shortly out in, um, in Italian. So thank you for listening to me. Mm. Thank you all for your uh, for your comments and for your uh, questions. Um, Joe, can I start answering some of them, or you want to? Um, yes, that, to speak or to, to present the other video with uh, Renate. That no, that's fantastic. If you do, sorry, I'm um, <laughs> somehow becoming technically incompetent completely. Yes, do answer the questions and then we other have the other short video and I'll get that ready. You can you tell me Anna, okay. when you want it. There was a question about the microchimerism. So uh, if you allow me, I would like to just to, to quote from the article, which explains. Oh, Anna, sorry, can I get sorry, you sorry. to start okay. your could I get you to start your video? Um, we had to stop it during that video. But if you uh, open your video again, that would help. Great. Thanks. Of course. Sorry. I don't know what. Then. So, um, what is uh, the microchimerism? Um, since the, uh, the 17th, we have known that fertile cells can pass into the blood of the pregnant mother, accumulating in various organs. And vice versa, cells from the pregnant mother can pass into the fetus and concentrate in her system as well. During pregnancy, mother and baby are connected by placenta and the umbilical cord. It is through this connection that some cells are exchanged and combined 
into both bodies. So the microchimerism is this connection which established between the pregnancy and then uh, it, is, it rests present in the body of the woman, of the mother and of the child for many, many years, for several decades, 30 years after a pregnancy, after the birth, in the body of the mother, there still are, are cells from the body of the, the child she gave birth to and vice versa, the child have uh, cells from his mother. This is a, this is a bond which cannot be uh, sell or uh, uh, deleted or denied. This is a, a reality, a biological reality in the bodies of the, of the both. Um, then um, there was another question concerning the, uh, the context in which it is done. The question was uh, about uh, what about uh, if uh, it is done by uh, the family members? First of all, what we are fighting against is the market, is the exploitation, is the use of women on the interest of other people. The only one, the only person in a surrogacy arrangement, altruistic or whatever, the only person who takes risks for her own life, health, but life also, is a pregnant woman, is the mother. So when it is done in a family context, of course, it happens from years, and we know it in several cultures, uh, societies, uh, and so on and so forth. But there is still the woman, the, the mother, who risks her life. There were situations when the mother lose her life, and the brother or the sister who ask her to do this have to live with this. But what we observe what does, was that, uh, for instance, in, uh, in uh, Australia, there is a recent study from this year or, or last year, I think, um, uh, who, in, in which um, more than 100 uh, surrogate mothers and um, intended parents were uh, investigated uh, in an altruist, in altruistic arrangement. And what the study shows it does is that even in those conditions, when the surrogate mothers are sisters or mothers of or close friends of the intended parents, they are always, always in a situation uh, dominated economically, professionally, uh, even uh, concerning their uh, the way the um, the place where they live, the neighborhood, is um, in inequality conditions concerning the uh, intended parents. So the one who are doing the women who are doing this are always in a way or in another exploited. But the most important is the market. What happened on a, on a um, in a system where the only who can the, the only one who can use uh, surrogacy are the one who have uh, a sister or a mother uh, who can do this for them. What about the others? This is even more unjust. Um, what can we do in front of gay men who are asking for surrogacy? Uh, do we need uh, more gay men to? Uh, uh, fight for uh, women's rights. I do not. Uh, I don't know. If <laughs> we need uh, gay men to fight for uh, women's rights, what I know is that gay men, all gay men, are made under pressure by the lobbyists, uh, by the president of men having babies that uh, I hear in several occasions, and uh, he is really uh, asking, clearly asking all gay men to ask for surrogacy. So he, he made this appeal to all gay men to ask for surrogacy. So what we need, I think, is that some gay men <laughs> express their rejection of this, uh, of this practice, express themselves, show that they do not agree with this uh, appeal, with this um, demand, 
and that uh, they are, on the contrary, uh, opposed to, to surrogacy. So not asking for women rights, but uh, nevertheless uh, express their will that do not be associated to this, uh, to this claim. Um, Uh, yes, this uh, the, the practice. The practice of, of uh, surrogacy is based on uh, the use of uh, techniques and processes that were used first uh, on the animal. This is uh, really very clear, and also all the eugenics uh, which are uh, related to surrogacy are also uh, influenced by uh, by this. Uh, I'm sorry, I could not uh, follow the other questions uh, that you put on when I was we, uh, talking. Should we show the other video now, Anna, and then that will give you a bit more time? Um, well, let's do that. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Renate Klein and I speak to you from Australia. I urge you all to read this wonderful book towards the abolition of surrogate motherhood. It is fantastic, it has uh, articles by women writing from Spain, from France, from England, from the US, from Australia, from Austria, from Japan. They all talk about different aspects of surrogate motherhood and they all come out with one very clear conclusion and that is surrogate motherhood is a human rights violation of the two women who partake in this, the so-called surrogate, which is a misnomer, and the egg provider, which is very dangerous to do for her. And of course, it's also a human rights violation for the child. And for all these reasons, there's only one thing we need to do. It is to stop surrogacy, to abolish it. And not as some groups want us to do, to regulate this. That would be entirely the wrong path to take because it would say that yes, this is something that we need to regulate. We need to weed out the bad surrogacy, but we can keep the good one. And what we are all in this book saying, there is no good way of surrogacy. It is all bad. It's a human rights violation and we need to stop it. Um, so, Oh, I'm sorry, back to you again. Okay, thank you. Um, one question about uh, the studies uh, on the mental well being uh, of the children born to surrogate. So, yes, there are studies, some studies, not many, but there are some uh, longitudinal studies made by uh, uh, Cambridge. Uh, team, uh, researcher team, uh, which were um, directed by uh, the psychologist uh, Susan Golombok, which was uh, uh, worse because she's uh, retreated now. Um, she, uh, so she, she was uh, not a clinician, she was a, an academic, a researcher, and she made studies, uh, longitudinal studies from uh, more than 10 years on uh, surrogate, surrogate women, surrogate families, uh, and uh, surrogate uh, children born from uh, surrogate. What is very interesting to see is that uh, always the, in the longitudinal studies, people who stay, people who remain, are not the same who begin the study, to begin to, to, to answer. So 10 years later, uh, there are more than a half who are still uh, present in the in the study. Who are the people uh, who are uh, who are in the study? Those who can say positive things about what happened to them. So uh, of course the studies uh, show that there is no problem. Children are doing well, and uh, this is the academics. 
but also the um, NGOs, the associations, the movements of uh, people who obtained uh, children through surrogacy uh, organize uh, shows, organize conferences, uh, made uh, documentaries uh, to asking their, their children to express and to tell how happy they are being the children of their parents. So we have children uh, at eight, 10, 15, uh, who uh, go on the scene and uh, saying that they are very happy to be there and that they are just okay uh, being born by uh, a surrogate uh, mother. Can we just for a minute envisage about what that can be if we ask children born because the mother could not abort. Say you're happy, you are eight year old, you are loved by your parents, your mother did not did, uh, abort you. Are you happy with your life? Can we just for a minute imagine what it could be? A scandal, of course, but there is no problem to put the pressure and put the responsibility on the children because some adults wanted to bought them to surrogate mothers. So yes, there are studies showing that children are just well. Well, this is not what happened to all children. I personally know cases in France from children of children who are in the child protection system. No one is talking about them. No one ever will know about those children. Why? Because the journalists, because the producers, because all the media who are uh, interested in the question uh, are searching for the, 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 the examples, for the illustrations only uh, to the associations of the parents. So the parents who, uh, for, for who, uh, the surrogacy or the relation with the child uh, is not a good one, is not a positive one, we'll never say it. So this, we have an enormous problem of the uh, lobbyists, which are very present in the media and very influential, influential uh, at the political level. Children ask, are doing well. What about all, uh, all the others who are not asked how they are doing? And what about uh, the method, the method by which we obtain such uh, such answers. Sorry, I could not <laughs> have, uh, see other questions. I will just ask. Uh, see. And um, I'll just uh, just add as well that uh, young women I talk to, most teenage women in Britain who I talk to think that women should have the right to abortion they should have the right to choose and to control their own reproductive health but they many almost all of them believe there should be free surrogacy for all on the NHS that surrogacy should be on our national health service they are really pro surrogacy so my question is what well, have you do you know what young people think and older people think of surrogacy is it what's public opinion Public opinion is more and more influenced by what they see on the media. And um, young people are, uh, as I can see, as I can see, so I, I did not uh, study, but uh, what um, uh, the sondage, I, I cannot find the word, uh, what we are told. That's an that, opinion poll, sondage is yeah, opinion, opinion poll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what they told us is that uh, public opinion is uh, very positive and more and more positive uh, concerning uh, surrogacy. Why is this? Because no one ever talks about health risks for women. When we were talking about uh, women, surrogate mother who died in uh, surrogacy, uh, men came on my Facebook, Twitter page, uh, telling me, so how many? 
this was a reaction. And uh, how, how many women uh, died in uh, surrogacy? That's normal in any pregnancy, there are risks. So uh, what's all about? And those people have the power to decide what to show at the television, what to talk about uh, at the radio, uh, what uh, to publish uh, as a book, uh, and uh, what uh, emphasize to give to uh, such information. Women, we, um, how to say, it? The, the perspective is never woman-centered, never in the media. It's never women-centered, uh, uh, neither concerning the, the political um, approach. Uh, and uh, we saw it when uh, we were trying to, we were discussed, discussing it, with uh, international bodies, international instances, United Nations, European Win uh, Union. And uh, we made interventions. I made it, Marie-Joseph made it, uh, Berta aussi, uh, as well. And uh, we were told, I was told directly, yes, there are some risks, but we always uh, have to see uh, the advantages for those who can benefit for this, for, for this uh, practice. So when we hear this uh, from the part of uh, people who are supposed to be concerned by women rights, and when they tell, me, t tell us, uh, yeah, there are some negative consequences, but there are also advantages for the people who can profit. Uh, there is a, 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 a big problem because we can see that the media very much influenced the general narrative and the general perspective. So in this context, of course, young people are also influenced because people can do, uh, women can do what they want. They can become prostitutes, they can become surrogate mother, they can uh, uh, sell their organs. That's okay, that's the liberty. And uh, when we uh, show, when we saw uh, right now the big influence of the pornography on the young women, uh, we can uh, really understand that uh, there, there is a, a turning point uh, right now concerning the, the importance and the, the emphasis that we have to maintain on women's rights and not to let them pass to uh, any other people's rights to use women. I'm sorry, I don't know if I was uh, clear. I think I was not. Yeah, really clear. Um, so there are a couple more questions in the Q&A or in the chat. There's, um, this is a question that uh, Anna that is come from Simone saying, can you speak to Marxist feminist Sophie Lewis, who has a book called Full Surrogacy Now, who also promotes mechanized birth? <laughs> well, um, I know that uh, there are uh, some uh, philosophers and uh, other academics uh, that are promoting uh, the professionalization of uh, surrogacy and uh, that are con who, who consider that uh, this is a, a real full expression of, uh, of women uh, liberty. Of course, I, I, I'm sorry I could not finish the, to, to read the book of uh, Sophie Lewis. Um, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I cannot talk about it because I, I could not finish to read it. <laughs> so um do you think um you'd like to aunt, look at more questions or shall we um shall we say we've finished now as, as, as you wish uh, uh yes i saw that there was um something about um baby m baby m is uh, the uh, first uh, trial concerning a, a child born uh, to a surrogate mother, the uh, Mary Beth Whitehead. And uh, she um, gave birth to this child 
um, agreeing to uh, do it. She was the mother, she was the, also the biological uh, mother and uh, she agreed that uh, the child uh, is taken by uh, the, the father and uh, his wife. But after the, the birth, uh, she changed her, her mind. And uh, what uh, Phyllis Chesler uh, showed and remember in the, in the text is that uh, she warned that uh, this is if the trial permits, if the justice permits that uh, the birth mother uh, is, um, I was saying, uh, the, the child is taken to the, to the birth mother and she was really traumatized and tortured, Mary Beth's uh, white head uh, at that time, uh, then any woman, any woman can be separated from uh, her child in the interest of a man. And this is uh, what, uh, what happened right now. Uh, concerning um, Cuba, yes, uh, what can I say? Uh, it's uh, always, again, it's a market. And the market is uh, nourished by two main um, condition to main uh, resources. First is the, the, the poor women. And the second is uh, the quality of the uh, medical uh, technology in the country. So Cuba, there are poor women, there are hospitals. So the agencies can go to Cuba to use women and uh, medical uh, medical resources. This is what they are doing uh, also in South Africa, in Nigeria, in uh, Georgia, in Ukraine. In Ukraine, uh, concerning Ukraine, in August, uh, the British government were warning the subjects that it is difficult to go to Ukraine and they do not, uh, they, they recommend not to go to Ukraine in August, not to go to Ukraine for surrogacy because it is a war in this country. There are Canadians, Americans, British people who wanted to go back to Ukraine because they obtained a, uh, a child early this year in January or last year, they still have embryos and then, then they, they wanted to go back and they are asking right now Ukrainian clinics to do another surrogacy uh, for them. And they are saying, we uh, suppose that uh, women have to be in need given the, the war uh, situation. So we propose uh, to support them by uh, doing another, another surrogacy. So this is a, a global market in which women are used. Uh, so anywhere where the women are in poor condition, the inequalities are very present. Uh, the states do nothing to, uh, to, to, to fight these inequalities, men, women uh, inequalities, everywhere the market uh, goes and take profit. Fantastic. So um, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to add spotlight. So thank you so much to Anna Deram today for um, speaking on Radical Feminist Perspectives. It was an incredibly inspiring um, webinar today, and I hope uh, many of us will buy the book and read it. And also, if you're either as an individual or as an organisation uh, would like to join ISAMS, um, we'll put the link in, but it's the International Coalition Against Surrogate Motherhood. You'll be able to see that, find that link. Uh, that's highly recommended because it's a really, really well-organized movement. It's international and they're doing fantastic work. So that would be another way to sort of join these actions that Anna Durham's explained. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you very and much. Thank you all, really. Great. Thank you very much. Everybody else, see you next week. Bye. Bye.